So today, today we're going to talk about, today we're going to talk about how to not, how to not get arrested. How do we not get arrested? Hey, aren't you supposed to be in the other room? So, we're on the road down here in Texas, and I thought I'd address a question we get quite a bit. <laughs> and it comes up quite a bit on my channels. Hello, Sherry. Yes. How do we not get arrested? How do you do activism? How do you go out? I mean, whether you're like a, a constitution-toting, gun-packing patriot, or like a, a guitar-waving street singer doing activism, how do you not get arrested? And I thought we'd address this specifically tonight and do a little bit of Q&A on it. And maybe even, I have my laptop here with a couple highlight videos, we might even look at a few Thanks, Victor. We might even look at a few situations, okay? Of me getting arrested, of me not getting arrested. How do you not get arrested when you're out in the street? Dealing with a police officer, dealing with a judge, with a public official. How far can you push it? How do you know when to do and, and when not to do? I'm going to give you my number one rule. Hey, guys. And, and Nicole, that's not true because I've, I've dealt with police in California. I, I think I counted the other day and I've dealt with police. People on my YouTube channel, they're like, well, Gavin would never get away with this in my state or he could never do this in my state. And I think I've done like 10, 12, 15 different states. I've done activism, I've dealt with police, things like that. In. And so the list just keeps growing because human beings are essentially the same everywhere. doesn't matter. So we love our neighbor, we be bold, we stand up. But how do you not get arrested? Let's talk about that specifically. Now, the first thing I do, and you can take this tip or leave it. I'm going to go into the carnal tips a little bit here. Didn't mean that in a weird way. But, okay, the first thing I do is I appeal to heaven because I think, I think God protects me in spite of myself. So you can determine that. I think, I think a man of principle that stands up for something always needs to get first on his knees before his maker. Now, some people are going to be, like, dismissive of that and whatever. Okay, believe as you want. I'm just saying that's where I come from. But what is the actual, what is the actual tactic of not getting arrested? And I'm going to give you some very specific things that you've never heard before. One of them being, well, maybe you've heard them from me, but I'm going to condense them today. One of them being confidence. I, I'll have people say, oh, if you were black, you'd never get away with this. If you were Mexican, you'd never get away with this. You know, if you were in my state, you'd never get away with this. There's always a reason people give to not stand. And we can't, we can't keep giving those reasons. We can't have a reason to not stand. We have to stand because it's right. Now, America has to grow a pair. Whether you're in Texas or California, New Mexico, or the bio, America has to grow a pair. We have to stop acting like slaves. We have to stop thinking like slaves. And this goes to everything from showing your receipt at the door to, to complying just because a police officer says. So the first thing I do is I have the mindset. Now, have you ever read a story or a book, right? Have you ever read a story or a book and, and it talks about, you know, certain, a certain person. He's a commander, or maybe he's a general, and it talks about his bearing, his command presence, things like that. Those kind of things are real, and we all need to tap into this a little bit. If, if you walk up slumped shoulders and uncertain, like you are the slave, you're going to get treated like you're the slave. If I walk up to a police officer... You know, I look them straight in the eye. Let's have an eye staring contest. Okay, I'm going to look at you right in the eye. Tell me who looks away first. Now, this is a little easy for you because <laughs> you're not actually staring at me. When we do this in person, we would actually do an eye contact and we would practice this. Now, that's missing petty and, and silly, but eye contact is very important. So eye contact, your bearing, your posture. If you walk up, I don't care if you're black or white or pink, all right? You walk up. Don't laugh at me. 
You walk up and you have confidence in what you're doing. You make eye contact, you're assertive, you're bold. It doesn't necessarily mean you're hostile. It can mean you're hostile. It depends on the situation. <laughs> but your bearing has a lot to do with it. So I walk up to an officer and I'm like, hey, what's going on here? Now, which, which is going to have a different reaction? I walk up and I'm like, officer, I'm not sure you're supposed to, are you supposed to be, um, well, I just didn't know if you were supposed to be doing that. Okay. Or you walk up and I say, hey, officer, what are you doing there? Now, which is going to make an officer, a public official, whoever, which is going to make them pause more? Now, I'm not being rude. People call that rude because they, they revel in their slavery. slavery. In America, we revel in our slavery, and the slave does not want to stand up in America as long as, as their parcel of the serfdom is, is left open to use. They're okay with their slavery, unfortunately, much of the time, and so they will attack those that stand up. But you have to set that aside. You have to keep that firmness. Now, let's actually, I'm going to pop the camera off here for just a moment. I want to look at, I'm going to show you guys, we're going to, we're going to do this a little bit hands-on. We're going to do this in real time. All right, so I want to take, and let me see here. Yeah, I can flip the camera around here. And look, you can watch any of these videos, okay? But I'm going to show you a couple different scenarios for real here. And I want you to look at these because your posture and your eye contact is just number one, okay? So starting with some self-confidence, some eye contact, some posture. Now, let's go further. So, there he goes. Just settle down in the trailer. Okay, now watch this. Will you return my brother to the courtroom? Sir, this is my courtroom. No, this is our courtroom. How dare you say that this is your courtroom? This is the people's courtroom. I'm telling you to be quiet. I'm, I'm telling you, you are in contempt of this court. Do we need to arrest you, ma'am? Are you going to tase me, bro? Are you going to tase you? Stand up! Stand up! Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. He's not resisting. You got to back up. Pause. Now, what just happened there? What did Gavin just do? Gavin got arrested. Boom. Now, interestingly, and this surprises people, that's the only time I've ever been arrested, okay? You can watch that full video of me getting arrested and the family and all those people in the courtroom standing up to those corrupt judges in Douglas County. But here was the situation. What did you see in that video? You saw me first having oral arguments with a judge, okay? I'm in oral arguments with a judge very firmly, not complying with her orders as I have a right to do because she was breaking the law. My brother Nathan, as you saw in the beginning, was just kidnapped from the courtroom without any lawful reason whatsoever. And I was standing up to this judge along with other people in the courtroom, but I was the most vocal about it. Now, my dad also got arrested that day simply because after they dragged me out, he wouldn't sit down. Okay, courage means standing up for something. And sometimes you get arrested. Sometimes it's okay, but do so judiciously, all right? It was pretty much a given in this case that I was going to get arrested. Look around the room. What did you see? Cops everywhere. They were waiting in the wings to arrest Gavin Sign. They knew he was going to be there. They were prepared for that, all right? So even though in that case I had bearing, I had posture, I was confident, I was firm, and I was loud, if, if you will, I still got arrested. The judge either had to relinquish the courtroom to us, essentially, or have me arrested. So when you stand up to a judge, the judges now are treated as gods in this country. We've let it get that bad. Chances are, if you stand up boldly to a judge, <clears throat> you're going to get arrested. Now, if you're the defendant, you might get away with a little more. That's something to keep in mind. So first of all is your confidence. Now you're knowing the situation you're going into, and you're thinking about whether you're going to get arrested or not, whether you're willing to, etc. I'm going to talk about how you can do a tactical retreat here before we get to the end, and I'm going to try to make this as brief as possible. So, in that case, getting arrested was part of the process, okay? However, I learned a lot from that, and that I realized from that whole incident, which put me in court for about a year, along with the rest of my family, that, that justice in the courtrooms is wholly gone. There is no due process, even for the people that have committed real crimes, okay? Now... Let's look, let's look at another one. Let's look at one where I'm not getting arrested. And most of these you may have seen, but if not, you can watch them. 
on my channel. Okay, so here's another one. Um, is there a uh, lockbox in here? No. Okay. RCW 9.4, 1.3. The weapon in the courthouse. Yeah, so you're debating about whether there's a lockbox in the courthouse, going around the with a security guard. Absolutely no and what happens next, right? Officer walks in. Sir. I'm doing all right, Mr. Sanger. He knows me. Now, did you say you had a weapon on you? Please release my hand. Second, did you say you had a weapon on you? Please release my hand, sir. Gentlemen, no, I don't have a weapon. I don't have a weapon. I'm going to check you to make sure. I'm just going to check you. Do you have probable cause to believe I have a weapon? Okay. Okay. If you want to hand that down or set it down, I don't care. Please, please take me. Please release my hand. Can you please put that down? Can, uh, can, can I hold it with this hand? Is that all right? No, because I need both your hands. All right, well, let's put it right here. Anyway, okay. let me check something here. I'm not sure what probable cause you have to believe I have okay. a weapon. Okay, put both your hands behind your back. I didn't know if you wanted the number four. Before. So, folks, I, I don't know what probable cause is. We're just going to cooperate here. Okay. But... The issue we have is a constitutional. You have a weapon on you. I'm being patted down right now. Right. For a weapon. There's no evidence whatsoever that I that I have a weapon. Fair statement. Oh look, we have a, we have the military showing up here. Okay. They got this. They got a silencer on. They've got a weapon. Let me. Let me okay. We're losing our freedom. And I've taken stands like this long before I was running. This kind of stuff. We got militarized police units in here coming in and groping me because okay, they feel that I have a weapon. You can wait a second. No, I can't. Now, what happened here? Gavin didn't get arrested here. Now, what do we see? Totally different situation, of course. When you're in the field, when you're on the street, if you hold your own, you know what you're talking about, and you don't lose control. If you, if you maintain control of the situation and your voice, I find that oftentimes you will not get arrested. Now, what happened here, right? There's a pat down. There's an, there's an illegal search going on right here, right? This officer had no right to take hold of me, and I had a right, both morally and constitutionally, to resist. However, had I done so, sure, I would have been arrested. Even if it's my right, I would have been arrested for resisting regardless, and most likely convicted in the highly corrupt courts of Grant County. I mean, this is the county with judges that steal people's children, they steal their homes, steal their money. These courts are courts are the greatest terrorists in our nation, but they're backed by the good old blue line. Now, in this case, what happens? I didn't give an officer a narrative. I stayed extremely calm. And no, Justin, I didn't obey. I didn't consent to an illegal search. I was physically grabbed, and I chose to pick my battles. I chose to not get in the fight because by the end of this, I control the conversation. He says, you need to do this, and I say, no, you need to do this. I'm in charge of this. Not only did I control the conversation here, the county ended up complying, and within 11 days, after 20 years of non-compliance, the county relented and put the lockbox I was requesting into the courthouse. So it's a, it may be a small victory, but it was absolutely a victory. Now, what, what else is going on? First of all, I'm not being physically aggressive. I'm being the calm one. See, officers want you to lose control. Here's one of the problems people have is that people have no self-control. We, we have no self-control in America with our tongue. It blows my mind. It blows my mind, you know, ladies and gentlemen and men and women and kids, how people are just running their mouth. The, the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. And if you, you can control the tongue, you can control the ship. You need to control your tongue. You need to be, you need to be consistent. You need to slow down. You need to think about the words that are coming out of your mouth. And now the next day I went to the police station to complain about these officers, yes. And I was physically thrown out of the police station by the chief. Another good video that made them look pretty silly. And once again, did I fight back with force? No, because it wasn't the time or the place. I still won the conversation. A lot of times people go into situations in activism and they have the mindset of, of I have rights, I'm not going to take this, right? Um, I'm not going to let them take advantage of me. I look at it as I want to protect my neighbor. I look at it as I have rights, but I have to choose which hill to die on to the best of my ability. And I pray for that wisdom. But if you go in, if you're always looking out for self, you're going to lose the battle. And I see this in patriot movements, in every movement, in every faction. People saying, I'm going to stand up for me, right? I'm not going to take any more for me. And I'm saying, we need to stop taking any more for our neighbor, for the Bundys, for the, for the natives, for the, for the 
Schaefer Coxes, the Joe Robertsons, and the Jeff Winehouses of the world. You don't have constitutional rights. You have God-given rights, but they are not recognized in our, lawful, in our lawless courts. So understand that going in and be careful. Here's another tactic. I'm going to avoid going in and doing something in such a way that if I do get arrested, I'm going to be in prison for 10 years, okay? So if I got into a situation where I was resisting or where they might say I was resisting, first of all, an officer is going to say, stop resisting, stop resisting. This is always the tactic they use. Once they get you in this position where they're being violent with you, they're probably going to arrest you. They might even try to shoot you. Don't assume they won't. So they're going to say something like, stop resisting, stop resisting. How many times have you seen this, right? Counteract that. Make sure you got a video going counteract that. They're trying to take the narrative from you. And so I might say, I'm not resisting. I'm not resisting. I don't have a weapon. I'm not being aggressive, okay? I'm not being non-compliant. You can take the narrative back. And so we need to use this. This and the camera right here in my hand are, are our greatest weapon. Because if I go in and I try and do activism, well, I'm like, I have a gun, and you know, I try and get aggressive with that, and they get me with some weapons charge or something like that, you're going to be locked away. Unjustly, yes. But people go to prison for the rest of their lives for mere possession of a weapon. Even though no such law is lawful, their made-up felony arbitrary terms are totally unlawful. The government has no right to do it. They have no right to restrict our, our right to protect ourselves. They have no right. They have no right. To infringe on our rights, but they're doing it. And so we have to stand up principled, defiant. <clears throat> Defiance is very important. And this is what I want us to get better at. People say, well, can I do this? Will I get arrested? We'll start out, start out slow. Okay, what's another situation? Let's go to one of my early activism situations. This is probably one of my of actually on the street doing activism. The Constitution. I'm being detained. Come here. This is this is C. Castine. I'm being detained on grounds of the Constitution. That's a new one on me, actually. Now, see, I'm kind of jabber John here, right? But this is at a federal checkpoint in New Mexico. I've also dealt with one in Texas. They're all over the place down here. The fact that we tolerate these is appalling. It means we're not free. It means we're slaves. It's not safety. It's not freedom. Okay. But what's the thing here? Now. Let's talk about these checkpoints, because people do get arrested, dragged out of their cars, and sometimes you're with your family, you're on a trip, you know, people have their cars impounded. How far do you go? And I've thought a lot about this, because as the activist, as the patriot, as the, as the protector of, of, of human rights, you want to say, no, I'm not going to give in. And so people that do nothing, people that aren't actually on the street, love to pick you apart and say, oh, you caved, right? And I, I, I used to think... You could never, ever give in. Here's the thing. If you're walking down the street with your wife and a guy comes and points a gun at her head or at your head and says, give me your wallet, are you going to die for that or are you going to give up your wallet? Now, this is a common question that people thought about, right? Now, you might defend yourself and people are like, you know, the tough talkers are always like, oh, I would do this and I would work him over, whatever. Tough talkers are just that. The people that are bragging but you never see out on the street are just the people bragging on Facebook. I'm talking about people like the Bundys, people like Lavoie, people that do things. And if you're out there and you're active, you realize you have to be judicious, you have to be careful, and you combine that, you combine that with the firmness, with the assertiveness, okay? Hi, Scarlett. So what are you doing? You're bringing together the, the confidence, the principle. Principle is very important. You need a principled stand especially one that's just not about you. Oh, well, you know, you didn't, I don't like it that you gave me a ticket, right? So I'm going to fight with you. I'm not saying that the ticket is right. I'm not saying that you shouldn't even fight it. I'm saying choose your words and your battles. You'll notice in a message, I'm always making it about everybody, not just about me. Even if it's something that's happening to me, I'm doing it for everyone. These are not accidental tactics. You know, we can, we can study wisdom, and we can be vigilant, yes, Sherry, with wisdom, with principle, with character. And so then you'll see me interacting with an officer. If an officer is polite, like the one I got pulled over by the other day, right? If he's polite, I'm going to be polite back. In fact, I've been practicing being able to deal with a situation without going into full activist mode. Just being casual and conversational, even though I'm still asserting myself. Because once I go into full activist mode, the adrenaline starts pumping. It always starts pumping. That's the reality of it. 
But, but the thing is, you need to pace yourself. It's about making yourself aware of what you're doing, of what you're saying, of what's coming out of your mouth. Because when the adrenaline starts coursing through you, then sometimes if, if you're not predisposed to be self-controlled, you may lose control. You'll notice most of my situations, I contact the officers. They rarely contact me. I don't want to give them the upper hand. So usually if I'm in a situation, I'm not waiting till I get pulled over. I'm stopping and pulling over the officer to address his violation or his abuse of someone else. And speaking of which, here's one more before we wrap up. Make sure his unmarked car is uh, legal. Yes, sir. Afternoon, sir. How are you? Good. Hey, the reason I stopped you today is because I saw this car was unmarked. Is this a, a registered unmarked vehicle for undercover work or? Okay. Now, most of you have seen that video of me pulling over a cop. But what did I do there? Okay, what just happened? I pulled over him, so I immediately have the narrative. Hang on, I'm putting this back on the stand so it quits shaking around. I immediately have the narrative, and this is a good thing. Now, I'm not there to be nasty to him, but he's breaking the law. What did I say? I, I used their own words. I said, hey, sir, the reason I pulled you over today, I treated him as if I was the officer because I was, and I was stopping him. This is a totally different scenario than you were doing 15 over and you're getting a traffic ticket. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't debate with that officer, but debate it in the larger sense. Debate it in the sense of why are you out here harassing and collecting and abusing people when you should be protecting people, delivering the political prisoners from chains, etc., etc., right? So here's the thing. Here's, here's what we're learning here. Defend others. Also defend yourself and your family. But in your mind, make it about everyone else. Your principle, your confidence. You square your shoulders. You walk in. You assert yourself. And I will command officers, whether they do it or not. Because they're used to people complying with them. They're used to taking orders. And they work for us. We have to stop treating government as if we're petitioning them. I'm not petitioning the police to obey the law. I'm not petitioning Donald Trump and saying he should help the political prisoners and the Bundys. I'm demanding it. I'm stating it. They can choose to dishonor their oath. They can choose to commit treason against the Constitution and this people. That's up to them. But while I may demand it politely, I'm not there to ask their permission. I'm not there to say politely, hey, can I have three minutes? If I walk into the city council meeting, I would rather go in and barge in and interrupt the whole meeting than petition them for three minutes, okay? <laughs> so, so confidence, assertiveness. I'm not asking the legislators to change the gun law like we did with the I-594 rally where 3,000 of us gathered to defy their new gun law. Now, see, that was a felony statute, but... What's the thing? It wasn't one person doing it alone, and it was just after the law went into effect, thousands of people gathering to violate it. Why violation instead of just another weak need protest like all your gun groups are always doing? Because we headed it up with squared shoulders and courage and boldness, and we said no more. It's what should be happening in California right now with all their new gun laws. But people are afraid to stand up. And you have to be careful. You have to pick your battles. You have to decide if you're by yourself, do you just want to be bold? You know, do you want to, you should know the difference of things like, is this a felony or is this a gross misdemeanor? If you, if you know you're going into an activism situation. Of course, if I'm stopping and interacting with an officer, I just hold my own. I might be a little firm. And then if they get real hostile, I might back off a little. And I might, I might say, hey man, hey man, calm down. I'm not, I'm not out to get you. All right. And so I will, I'll, I'll go back and forth if need to be, I will play good cop, bad cop a little bit if need be, but we have to be defiant, and we really need to be defiant. It's good to be defiant under the radar, but we really need principled mass defiance on the camera, large groups of people, especially with things like gun restrictions and free speech restrictions, but don't think it won't always get us in trouble. And so we need to learn to read the situation, to have wisdom, to read the officer. You know, if I'm if I'm dealing with an officer, I've been dealing with officers before, like the like the guy in Soap Lake, right? He's trying to escape into the station and I am blocking the door with my foot. And people would say, wow, you're really pushing it. And after I walked away from that, I'm like, wow, that was kind of pushing it. But I was I was tr being bold and at the same time, I'm reading the demeanor, right? If I think an officer is about to murder me, I'm probably gonna back off a bit and say, well, hold on now. You know, and this goes to a final point in all of this, okay? So what are the methods? You be confident, you be principled, 
you have a message of liberty for everyone, and you pick your battles. People say to me all the time, Gavin, you should have done this, you should have done that. Oh, you shouldn't have done this, you caved. You shouldn't have showed ID at, at when you got pulled over. You caved, right? Most of the points usually have basis in truth in our rights. Here's the thing, though. The humble traffic ticket is a death sentence if you resist. Now think about this. Every, you know, people say, oh, we're such an advanced society. Our, our police system, our justice system is draconian, fascist, criminals. That's what they are. And unfortunately, whether, whether intentionally so or not, the officers out there enforcing it have taken part in that. Now, it doesn't mean I don't, I don't have compassion for them. I love my neighbor. But I'm going to tell them the truth, and I'm also going to stand up to them, and you have to as well. We have to throw out this, this fake patriotism thing of, oh, I'm a patriot and I stand with police. Standing with police has nothing to do with being a patriot. A patriot, a constitutionalist, a liberty lover, stands with liberty. So if, if, a, if an officer is defending liberty, you stand with him. If an officer is being abused or persecuted, you stand with him, just like you do your neighbor. There's, there's no patch. There's no badge. There's no rank to the principled person. Okay? So you have to have that foundation. Finally, finally, you're going through, you're reading people, you're thinking this through. Pick your battles. What do you do if you need a retreat? Let's say you come to one of these federal checkpoints, okay? Now, some of these checkpoints, a lot of times people will say, oh, am I being detained? Am I being detained? Or maybe it's a DUI checkpoint. Everybody's illegal. Am I being detained, officer? Am I free to go? Now, you could just do that. You could answer no questions. Usually, I will turn to the camera and start explaining to people what's happening. Because I'm not there to answer the officer's questions. And I will tell them that. I'll say, hold on. I'm not here to answer your questions, officer. I'm asking the questions tonight. And here's my question for you. Did you take an oath to the Constitution? So I might assert myself in that way. But what if push comes to shove? What if push comes to shove and the officer or the Fed or whatever is like, if you don't obey me, I'm going to break your window and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to arrest you. And I'm going to take your car and I'm going to take your kids and give them to CPS. Now, you could stand up con and continue to stand at that point. But you may say, wait a minute, this isn't the battle for that. Here's the thing. You can pick one hill to die on, okay? So you have a right to resist a false arrest, a false search, a false question. You have a right to use force if need be. That doesn't mean it's wise. It doesn't mean it's the most principled thing to do. What is the right choice? Well, you got to seek God and seek wisdom and seek the best choice in each situation. But what I'm saying is, let's say I'm in that situation. I'm in the car with my family and the feds are gathered around. They're getting ready to break my window and they're saying, if you don't tell us whether you're a United States citizen, we're going to break your window and arrest you. And and then I'm, I might at that point, how can I, how can I have a tactical retreat living to fight another day instead of sitting in a prison cell or dead and also educate and control the narrative. Well, what I might do in a situation like that is say, whoa, hold on. Are you telling me that you're threatening my life with deadly force and you're going to hurt me if I don't tell you I'm a United States citizen? And they're going to... So immediately now I'm putting this back on them. And if push comes to shove, I might say, fine. Since you're threatening my life and you have a gun to my head... As if a robber is robbing me on a back alley, I'll give you what you want. Here you go. See, I haven't lost. At that point, I haven't simply caved. I haven't simply cowered and said, yes, sir, I'll do whatever you say. I'm a slave. No. I've said, you know what? If you're robbing me, it's not worth dying for this today. But know that you are a robber. Know that you are a criminal. Know that you do have a gun to my head. And the only reason I'm complying is because you are forcing me at the threat of my life. So you've just taken the narrative and probably not gone to jail. I don't say that you should do that every time. A lot of times I'll push it. I'll try and stand up because usually, in many cases, the bad guys will back down on those on-the-street kind of situations if you stand your ground. We've got to learn to have some courage. You know, we go to all these places and I see, I see these patriot groups and communities and, and even patriotic states like Texas and they and they think they're patriotic because they wave a flag or because they say we're more free that's not what makes you a patriot it's not what makes you free no more is the slave no more the slave than the man who thinks 
he is free, who, who brags about being free when in fact he is still a slave. That's the greatest slave of all, is the one that thinks that they're free. And I see that all over America. That's what's promoted in Republican conservative politics. It's what's promoted in its own way in, in, in liberal politics. See, the factions, the parties aren't what this is about. This is about principled people doing right, loving their neighbor. Okay, so we're going to wrap. This went too long, but not getting arrested is a complex question. And fair, fair warning, there's no guarantee you won't get arrested doing this. But I'm sharing the tactics that I use. I've had a lot of encounters on the street, a lot. And there's a lot of videos, and that's one thing I always do. That's my first rule is always film, okay? The camera always goes on. There's going to be a camera. Now, with that, where do we go? You get out there on the street and you do something, but you don't have to stop. You don't have to, you don't have to stop and do it all at once, okay? I didn't start doing all this stuff all at once right from the beginning. I started thinking it through. I started learning my rights. That's why I do a lot of videos on, on our rights and, our, and things like that. But you can start slow. You can start just by pulling out a camera and sitting across the street from a traffic stop and, and filming a traffic stop, right? You're just watching out for your neighbor. In fact, I still do that fairly frequently. Oftentimes, it does not lead to an encounter. It just leads to me stopping the vehicle and filming from across the road. However, even though, even that, it still gets my heart pumping. The adrenaline still starts running because we're dealing with the largest criminal gang in America, probably in the world. This unified gang of our justice system that abuses and extorts with abandon and with no restraint most of the time. Little restraints here and there. You know, some officers, some sheriffs are better than others, for example, but none of them are upholding their oath and defending the Constitution. And so we have to start being the beacon. We have to start showing love for our neighbor by stepping up. And sometimes I'll tell people, you know, it, look, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch out for you whether you like it or not. You know, it may, the, the traffic stop I'm watching may be someone that doesn't like me. You're not going to be rich and famous and loved by the world for standing up for liberty. The people never were. But we've become cowards in this nation. And so we need to use tactics. We need to use... We need to use wisdom in what we do but ultimately we got to reach down and we got to find some courage and we got to start standing up it starts with us it starts with you pulling out a camera it starts with you saying no i'm not going to obey this new law it starts with you saying that publicly and getting a thousand friends together at a rally to defy a law and so ask questions. Yeah, Dan, you can ask for name and badge number. A, a lot of times I'll ask more assertive questions because they're used to that one. I will try to come in if I command the situation, especially if it's a hostile officer. If I have an officer that's being nice about it, so to speak, then we'll try and have a conversation. I'll try and educate him a little bit along with educating the viewers. But if I have a hostile officer, then it's going into full activist mode. If I have a hostile judge or a hostile clerk, right, I'm going to go into activist mode, but I'm still going to try and control my tongue. I'm still going to be thinking here, what is coming out of my mouth? What am I standing for? Who am I standing for? How am I standing for it? I think a lot of it starts with how we think of it. I do not look at police as an authority. I look at the police as my subordinate. The authority is the people's rights. The authority is inherent in the people. Even though in practice we are slaves, the rights to us, foundational, natural, God-given, do not change. They don't change with constitutions. They don't change with time. They will be the same, and they've always been the same. It doesn't matter what your legislator says. We have to stop looking at false officers. When an officer, a judge, whatever, when they step outside the authority that we, in whom the authority is vested, have granted them, they cease to be an officer at that point. They may still have a gun to your head, but that's all our courts have left. Our courts and our justice system is nothing more than a gun to our head, period. Their authority is long ago gone because none of the process is operating within the law, within human rights, or within the Constitution. And I'm going to go in knowing that, and that changes the way I look at it. It changes the way I look at their laws. As a believer in Christ, it changes my foundation. You know, we say, well, wait a minute. People tell me, Gavin, you're supposed to submit to authority. And I'm like, my authority is God. Those people are an authority. In this country, under our Constitution, 
The authority is what is the law? What are people's rights? What is God's standard? What's our Constitution say? The ones who are refusing to submit to authority are your judges, your police officers, your city councils, your mayors, your county commissioners. They're the ones who are in rebellion against the Constitution and moral principle. They're the ones who refuse to submit to the law because the law is your rights, my rights, and our children's rights. And that is what we have to stand up to. And that's what I have to do, and that's what you have to do. Activism isn't for entertainment. It's to love your neighbor and try the best we can to restore liberty. And other than that, all I've got is my appeal to heaven. You guys have a good night. Get out there and keep up the fight.